Hello there, welcome back to the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Uh, today we're going to be uh, checking out our to-do list, explore Bewley and the surrounding area. You should be careful to leave no stone unturned, so to speak. So we need to investigate everywhere. We must have missed something to be able to progress a little bit. We also need to find something that will allow us uh, to convince uh, Mr. Bryden to allow us to excavate Hobbs Barrow, which is the whole reason for this game. And of course, there is some local folklore which we need to ask about. So there's probably some other people around who we maybe haven't spoken to. Uh, so yeah, this is Excavation of Hobbs Barrow. This is part number seven, I do believe. There will be a playlist uh, in the card above, I think, and uh, um, on the channel. Uh, check out the rest of the episodes of this one. And if you are one of the very few people who are watching this, and I know there's at least one person who I think is watching all of these along, please do say hi in the comments. Uh, no one as of yet has said anything in the comments. I am a Randy channel, getting very few views, obviously. That's not to be, uh, uh, that's not a surprise. Um, and that's fine because I'm, I'm kind of making these videos for my own enjoyment. Uh, but if you are watching, do say hi. It would be uh, super cool uh, to see who who is actually watching these videos. Uh, but anyway, I believe we should continue before um, everybody decides not to watch anymore. So, uh, have we tried, the, 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 let's just check these doors. So far, nobody has been home in any of these uh, houses. I don't think anyone is home. Uh, yeah, just nobody's answered the doors. Now, I believe Cyril lives here, and he last time we met him, he was just standing outside the door, uh, well, outside of this wall here. Maybe he's home now? Book it off! <laughs> okay. Oh. The unmistakable charm of old Cyril. Okay, he is home. Let's try again. Let's try again. Book it off! Ah. Oh, okay. The un okay, so he's not answering. Unless he answers on the third try, but that's definitely all there is in this screen. So he's home. That's the first time someone's actually been home in any of these houses. Uh, oh, the blacksmith is here. He wasn't here before, was he? Good day. Hey oh, nice. Got a bunch of stuff here. Oh yeah, there was a knife stuck in the table in the inn, which you couldn't get out. I'm having some trouble extricating a knife from a table in the plough and furrow. Might I borrow a pair of pliers? A knife, you see. I can get that out for you. That's very kind of you, Mr. Crozier. Think nothing of it. Wait here. Oh, wait here. That could give us an... Okay, I thought maybe we'd give an opportunity to have a sneaky look in the blacksmiths, but no. Or a struggle. Here you are. So, thank you so much. What could have jammed that knife in that table so hard that everybody's just really struggling to get it out? That's certainly interesting. Are you familiar with any local folklore? Oh, why? The old cobbler used to tell me some right stories. Ah, uh, we haven't met so the cobbler yet. He sold yet. a pair of boots to a goblin when he were a young man. Quite possible. It's a goblin, true. We have met say. a goblin. I take it this cobbler was a regular at the plough and farrow. <laughs> Never drank a day in his life. Sober as a judge. Have you been to the Devil's Toe? Yes, I'm familiar with the cairn. Some say they've seen the goblin's daughter there, playing her fiddle. Can't say I've seen her myself, mind. So yeah, we had a strange dream, I think it was the last episode, um, where we met what was described as a goblin. Seemed quite helpful and quite friendly, offering to kind of help us with things. Um, maybe even help our father, who is, I think he's currently in a coma after falling off a horse. Um, has been that way since we were a child, so he did say that he was the only person who could help him. I think that's what he said. Do you know any other stories about this goblin? I don't have the time to be standing here gossiping about old wives' tales. Apologies. Hmm. Okay, well, I think maybe we should go and see uh, the cobbler again. What do you make of this stone? Don't look like out to me. Okay. Oh, that gave me uh, Westworld vibes when they, they show people the pictures. They say, what do you think of this picture? I say, oh, it doesn't look like anything to me. Look at this, Mr. Crozier. It's my father's journal. Oh, why? Why are you showing me? Did you slip it under my door last night? Ha! Have you gone daft? Why would I have your father's journal? Never mind. Do the sketches inside mean anything to you? Looks like a load of rubbish to me. I found out my father visited Bewley 25 years ago. William Bateman, perhaps you remember him? I would have been just a lad. 
What were you here for? That's what I intend to find out. Thanks for your time. Aye. Right. Speak to you later. Okay, well we did make some progress there, so we now have this knife. I should be careful. The blade is sharp. And I don't know if we've got any use for a knife yet, do we? Hmm. So which one? I think this one was the cobblers. Let's try to see if there are cobblers in. Hmm. No one here. There's not. Okay. Uh, who else do we need to speak to? Oh, there was some... Yes, I do remember the Reverend said he would be in the church if he wanted to stop by later. And he was going to be with somebody else. There's no one here, though. Uh, we have examined everything here. Okay, let's uh, forget that. Maybe he's in the other door? It's locked. No. Maybe it was still too early in the morning. Time is a little bit strange. It'll only pass when we sort of after we've reached a certain level. Oh, hang on. Hello. Let's follow her. Oh. Excuse me, sir. Who is this? Yes. Did you see a young girl with blonde hair pass by here? No, lass. There you are. Are you Thomasina Bateman? Oh, don't tell me this is Leonard's shoulder. Well, obviously we... yeah, we'll just tell him, yes. That's my name. Oh, marvellous. It's me, uh, Leonard's shoulder. Where Heavens, have you been? I'd given up on finding you. Please, take a seat, Miss Bateman. We have much to discuss. Why are you just sitting there? You've proven to be quite the enigma, Mr. Shoulder. I'm mortified. I offer you a thousand apologies. You see, I've been bound to me bed these past few days with a terrible fever. How dreadful. I take it you're feeling better now? Aye. I were on me way to find you when I stopped here to catch me breath. I've not much go in me these days. I'm sorry to hear that. I were worried you'd have given up on me and left town. I had no idea what had become of you, Mr. Shoulder. I spent a good amount of time pounding on your front door. I'm embarrassed. I, I really am. I've been doing my best to sleep through the fever. I am so very sorry. Do we believe Please him? Please accept me apology, Miss Bateman. Fine, Mr. Shoulder. I've come all this way. Let us speak of the business at hand. Marvellous. I've just learned that my father was part of a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow some 25 years ago. Why didn't you mention this in your letter? What? Where did you hear that? I have my means. I swear Miss Bateman, I had no idea. Hmm. I take it you will also deny delivering me my father's journal? I'm confused. What journal? My father's journal was slipped under my door at the Plough and Furrow. It wasn't you who did this. I've been bound to me bed, lass. Hmm. What an extraordinary coincidence. You are following in your father's footsteps. It would seem so, Mr. Shoulder. Okay, looks like we have the opportunity to find out a whole bunch of uh, information here. Let's go work our way through. Why did you invite me to excavate Hobbs Barrow? I've always been curious about the colourful folklore surrounding the place. My father told me all sorts of stories about it when I were a wee fellow. Stories that some folk around here take a little too seriously, especially after those lads entered the barrow a while back. How did you know about me? I saw your interview in the Bakewell Times. A young lady traveling about the land, digging up barrows. Perfect for the job. But why do you wish to excavate the barrow? I want to see what those lads found in there. My curiosity has grown over the years, and now it is time for the mystery to be solved. I must say, I am rather eager to find out what's in there myself. Yeah, so we know Hobbs Barrow, there was a previous excavation, which we'll obviously talk about in a bit. Um, and one of the people who excavated it shortly afterwards went mad and hanged themselves. Uh, one of the other people who excavated it was um, our father who, I'm not sure if it was related to the excavation or shortly after, 
had an apparent accident by, I think they said he fell off his horse and he was in a coma ever since. Um, so, yeah, there's something sinister about this barrow. I've managed to find Hobbs Barrow, but Mr. Bryden is yet to give me permission to excavate. Is that so? Keep trying. You'll relent eventually. Perhaps you could have a word with him. Oh, no. A lovely young lass such as yourself has a better chance of changing his mind than a shaky old goat like me. Hmm. You told me in your letter there would be no issue gaining access to the barrow. I didn't foresee anyone I wrote to you. I'm sorry this has been more complicated than anticipated. Don't give up yet, Miss Bateman. Keep trying with Mr. Bryden. I think maybe we'll make him our next point of uh, operations to go to go and speak to Mr. Bryden and, and uh, see if he's we've got any any clue as to what would uh, convince him to to let us uh, excavate. Did you know my father? I don't believe so. What's his name? William. William Bateman. He was in Bewley for at least a few days, from my understanding. I'm sorry, lass. My name doesn't ring a bell. Hmm. Are you sure you had no idea of my father's involvement in the previous excavation? I'm quite sure. A most fascinating coincidence, but nothing more than that. I'm starting to wonder if it's more than mere coincidence, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bateman, I did not take you for a credulous individual. I'm none of the sort. I mean, I mean, I don't know how many people are barrow experts. Well, your father was an expert in barrow excavations, and he taught us everything as a child. And then we're following in his footsteps as an adult by just doing it. So uh, it's it is a coincidence, but possibly not a super unusual one, since we, they're both kind of uh, experts in the same field. What can you tell me about the previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Oh, it was 25 years ago, or thereabout. Back then, Bewley were undergoing a period of great strife. Samuel Bryden hadn't harvested a single crop for two seasons. Even Hernwood was sick. Berries went to rot almost as quickly as they grew. Folks started to believe the ground were blighted. Disease spread through the livestock too. People were going hungry, a panic set in. That sounds terrible. Aye, but I managed to keep myself fed. These things happen in nature, but the blame for it all fell on Hobbs Barrow. It was long said that a goblin made his home there. A rumor took root that the goblin were not best pleased with the villagers. In revenge for some unperceived slight, the goblin placed a curse on the soil itself. The villagers believed that ridding the barrow of its lodger would put an end to it all. Hogwash. My father would have paid no heed to such tales. Whether it were his intent to join the excavation when coming here, I do not know. But whatever it were that Samuel Bryden and those lads did inside that barrel, people say it did the trick. The crop started to grow back, and health returned to the livestock. Yuli were no longer in the grip of dark forces. Hmm. You must understand. Folk here are a superstitious lot. They don't want you disturbing whatever it were those lads did. As far as the villagers are concerned, the problem were fixed. The thought of another excavation must be conjuring panic that you'll undo whatever it were they did. This does explain a lot. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And it's also why I'd venture nobody around here wants you to touch the black. Yeah. Except for you. I want to know what's there. Surely you don't believe these tales of goblins and curses to be true? Not at all. However, I suspect those lads did find something in the barrel. But did it have any connection to failing crops and dying livestock? No. I can assure you there's nothing to fear. Coincidence reigns supreme. So what do you think they found? That is for us to discover, Miss Bateman. Who was the third man who joined my father and Mr. Bryden on the excavation? I'm afraid I don't know. Although I'd heard about the excavation and I were intrigued by it. I mostly stayed at home during that time. The atmosphere in the village was rather too tense for me liking. And besides, the excavation were undertaken with an air of mystery about it. Hmm. 
Okay, yeah, so it's definitely making sense why people don't want us to go near uh, the, um, the Hobbs Barrow. Okay, let's carry on. Tell me more of this folklore you mention. It is said that Hobbs Barrow is home to a goblin. Everyone in Bewley has some version or another of this story. But the version my father told me as a child described the barrow as a thin place. The goblin were deemed to be the guardian of this so-called thin place. Tell me more about this goblin. Some said he were a mischievous little mite, snatching newborn lambs and smashing windows with pebbles. Others said he were friendly, there to lend a helping hand in times of strife. The latter of which makes it all the more surprising as to why the previous excavation took place. My father's stories put the goblin in the mischievous category. Saxnot, he called the creature. I recall one such anecdote, that Saxnot entered Bewley and ordered a pair of boots to be made by the cobbler. However, when collecting them, he insisted on paying for them with a bag of sow's teeth. The cobbler was so scared of angering the goblin that he accepted. A colorful tale indeed, Mr. Shoulder. Has any explanation been offered for why this sax not cursed the soil? Your guess is as good as mine, lass. Yeah, I do very much want to meet this cobbler. I bet he's got some tales. What is a thin place? A place where one can walk between worlds. Yeah, that's what I was guessing where it was. Where the flesh meets the spirit world. Hmm. Just superstition, of course, as you well know. Yeah, so, so uh, I was about then about to say about this dream. We did have a dream in the last episode where we met this goblin. And as I say, as I said a little while ago, he did seem friendly. I had a peculiar dream last night. I met a creature at Hobbs Barrow. I suppose you might say it was a goblin. It told me it had saved my father from trouble inside Hobbs Barrow. I'll admit the coincidence of this is somewhat astounding. A remarkable coincidence, but nothing more than that. But there is still one thing that puzzles me. The goblin told me proof of its claims would await me in the morning. Surely enough, I awoke to find that my father's journal had appeared in my room. Very queer indeed. Mr. Shoulder, you invited me here, to a town I'd never heard of, only for me to discover that my own father was here 25 years before. And not only that, but that he was also embroiled in some sort of superstitious hysteria which goes against everything he ever taught me. Something is wrong here. This must be more than mere coincidence. It's strange, I'll give you that. But please remember who you are, Miss Bateman. Hmm, well that's just... I'm not sure about anything here. This is my father's journal. Incredible. Can I look inside? You may. Look at these drawings. Wonder what it all means. You and I both. It all feels very out of character for my father. I'm sure you'll find the answers beneath the soil, Miss Babe. What do you make of this strange stone? A carving of a cockerel? Yes. It was strapped to my father's journal. Do you think it could have something to do with the previous excavation? Possibly, though I'm not aware of the motif having any meaning around these parts. Is this your glove? I've been looking all over for that. Where did you find it? In the alley behind the plough and furrow on the night of my arrival. Were you there? As I say, I've been bedbound for several days, Miss Bateman. Mm. How odd. Can I please have it back? Here. Thank you. Okay, so if he didn't drop it, who did? Unless, of course, he's lying, but... Hmm. We're peas of the same pod, Miss Bateman. I knew you wouldn't be frightened by a few old stories. It will be interesting to see what those lads found in there. Certainly. Thank you so very much for responding to my letter and for coming here. We have some great discoveries to make, you and I. I sincerely hope so. And the chance to follow in your father's footsteps. Right, time for me to shift these old bones. I'm to take me a spot of the plow and furrow. I'll be there all night should you need me assistance. Thank you, Mr. Shoulder. I'm sorry again for giving you the runaround. 
I promise I am not beyond redemption. I won't let you down again. See you soon. I was starting to wonder if Mr. Shoulder even existed. Okay, well, we've uh, certainly progressed that little chapter. Um, so I think, let's just check out what to do here. So still explore, convince Mr. Bryden. I want to go to uh, Mr. Bryden's and I'm trying to think where it was now. The day was starting oh, to test me. <clears throat> the word coincidence felt insufficient to explain what was happening. It was after that first conversation with Leonard's shoulder that I started entertaining thoughts of a truly irrational nature. What if my dream wasn't just a dream? Yeah, there's certainly a lot of coincidence if it was. What if it was all more than simple coincidence? Hmm. What if that thing really could help my father? Okay. Yeah, so now we've got the map. Um, Mr. Bryden's farm. Let's go straight there. Oh, flashback. Mummy? Oh, what's she burning? Get away from the fire, Thomasina. What are you burning? Nothing. Just waste. Now go inside. I bet it's more than that. Grab it. Ab. Abrax. Mummy, what is this? Abrax. Waste. Burn it. Oh, that's weird. What's going on? He's doing well to be maintaining all this land at his advanced stage. Good day, Mr. Bryden. Miss? I... I'll stop you there. I know what you're going to ask. No, I haven't changed my mind. There'll be no digging here, lass. Mr. Bryden, allow me to explain. There has been an astonishing development this morning. Yes? My father was with your brother during the excavation. Oh. Yes. Can you believe it? I had no idea he had been here. The answer's still no, lass. I saw what happened to poor Samuel. I won't risk the same happening to anyone else. But... That's enough now. You can feast your eyes on that hovel to your heart's content, but there'll be no digging. <sighs> Try again. No questions. Okay. I'm not interested. But... Off with you. Okay, what about if we try some of these objects on him? Show him the journal, maybe. Look, Mr. Bryden, my father's journal. It confirms he was with your brother during the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Ha, take that away from me. I'll be having none of that. Okay. The stone? He might know something about it. What do you make of this stone, Mr. Bryden? It was strapped to my father's journal. Wait a minute. Let me see that. Oh, this could be something. By God. Wait here a moment. I need to get something from inside. Oh, I think we done I it. I waited for what felt like an age. I now realise that Mr. Bryden must have been in a great debate with himself, wondering whether or not to share his own piece of the mystery with me. The goat stared at me, seemingly in pity, as I stood there in that rolling fog. Finally, Mr. Bryden emerged. The voice acting like is superb. As far as I know, what I have here is the only thing that Samuel brought back from Barra. Take a look. From Barra. Oh, snakes. Okay. Incredible. A pair. That's been in my drawer ever since Samuel passed. I suppose it might be important, so I kept it safe. Fate is clearly playing a part in your arrival, lass. Please, Mr. Bryden, allow me to excavate Hobbs Barrow, a place that is no more than dirt and stone. <sighs> You're not going to give up, are you, lass? I'm not. 
I think we've Samuel done managed to say one thing about those men that helped him. I think it's time I tell you. Yes? He stuttered out that one of those fellows could barely walk after they got out of there. Tongue-tied too, the man were. My father? You what? My father. He had an accident around 25 years ago that left him bedbound and unable to talk. Aye. Could be him. My mother told me it happened in a horse riding accident. Yeah. So Samuel it was the barra. boarded up that barra for a reason. Something unnatural occurred, I know it. Mr. Bryden, we must rely on our rational faculties to explain any... Promise me you'll be careful. Any sign of trouble, leave without hesitation and we board that accursed place up again. Understood? Wait, you're giving me permission to excavate? <sighs> Aye. Against me better judgement. I don't have the energy to stop you, lass. Thank you so much. I am grateful. Don't make me regret my decision. Take Samuel's stone. Are you sure? Aye. Give it back to me when you're finished, though. I promise. Thank you. I'll be sure to show you my discoveries, Mr. Bryden. I'd rather you don't. Now then, I've got things to get on with. I don't suppose you can spare any labour to help me with the dig? Don't push your luck, lass. Market's on today. Plenty of able-bodied men about. Ta-ra now. And Sweet. like that, I finally had permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow. As exciting as that was, I was distracted by what Mr. Bryden said of his brother's associate. There was no doubt in my mind that father was the stricken man he spoke of. You told me he was crippled after coming off his horse. Why did you lie to me? To protect me, to stop me from following in his footsteps. You failed. And so did Charles Bryden. He should have said no. He should have never given me that stone. Oh no. Okay. So let's have a quick look at the uh, the stone. This is the one that was on the journal. So I-A-W. I wonder if that spells something out. We've got the little star there. And then the other one, uh, C A Z, and then it's got little three stars, and this is snakes. It's quite cool. I wonder if we may get some more stones. We might have to put them somewhere. I don't know. Kaz. Okay. All right. So we need to find workroom for the excavation. We're still looking after the folklore and exploring Bewley. Okay, uh, right, well, let's carry on then, I think. Um, okay, so I guess what we should probably do is go back to... Uh, let's have a check out the Devil's Toe here. Just the, Oh, yes! Good day, little one. She's what people are calling the Goblin's Hello? Daughter, I reckon. What's this? A fiddle bow? There's no string. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Don't be shy. I don't mean you any harm. What are you doing out here all alone on the moors? It's not very Do you live she? here? Hmm. Would you like me to fix your bow so you can play your fiddle again? Oh, that got yes? her excited. <laughs> hey! And she's gone. Most peculiar. Perhaps I can mend the bow for her. If memories of my childhood violin lessons serve me right, bowstring is made from animal hair coated in a waxy resin. Oh. The strings don't vibrate without it. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so we have the resin already. We did pick that up. Got the resin. I've collected this lump of waxy resin. We just need the animal hair. Well, we have a knife, and we know where there's a goat. <laughs> we could try it. Uh, do we have anything? Because the goat was angry, right? The goat was angry. So you've got anything to give a goat? Oh, you know what? I think what I'm going to do. We're going to go back to the village square, and hopefully the market will be on. We might be able to buy something from the market. Not that we've got any money, but she looks rather grumpy. Maybe we could. I don't know what, what the goats like to eat. They eat anything, don't Good they? Good day. Fresh produce. What have you got for sale? 
I'm selling meat, vegetables, and all sorts of herbs and things. You're welcome to Avaganda. I'll be sure to browse. Goodbye. Ta-ra, miss. Uh, let's have a look. A decent selection of cuts and sausages. Okay. Various chards and beets. She is selling various herbs. Some familiar looking, some not. Tins of corned beef. Ghastly. I like a bit of corned beef, I'll have you know. The box is full of various sprouts and onions. Nothing particularly tempting. But are they tempting to uh, a goat? Okay. Well, we've got all oh, apples. Apple seller. A jolly looking fellow. He'd make a fine snake oil salesman. Let's speak to this guy. Good day. Freshly picked apples, miss. Would you like to try one on the outside? Yes, I would indeed. Yes, please. Yes, please. Here you are, miss. The uh, apple looks somewhat rotten. It's riddled with holes. Uh, well, I think I think it'd be fine for a, for a goat. Sacks of apples and cabbages. Oh, cabbages. They've all <laughs> seen better days. Okay, so I think that's everything there. Who do we have over here? A pie selling seller. selling an assortment of greasy meat pies and scotch eggs. Oh, nice. Let's get some. Can I interest you in a pie? Finest mutton in all the county. Two pence each. No, thank you. You're missing out. Yeah, I ain't got any money, unfortunately. Um, Perhaps you'd be more interested in a scotch egg. Freshly made, just one penny each. No, thank you. Okay. Miss Tompkins looks more anxious every time I see her. Who is this in the background? Anyone? No. Hello, Miss Tompkins. Hello. We weren't introduced earlier. My name is Thomasina. Ma'am? How do you fare, Miss Tompkins? I'm waiting for Mr. Ambrose. Have you seen him? Who's that? The milkman. Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. I'm afraid I haven't seen him. Yeah, we haven't met these people. You are in the employ of Lord Panswick? Aye. He employs half a bullion one way or another. I'm in need of some help for my excavation. Do you think his lordship could lend me some of his labourers? Maybe. Might you introduce me to him? Sorry, ma'am, but his lordship doesn't take visitors. Any road, I must wait here for Mr. Ambrose. Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. Okay, so who is Miss Fenchurch? Who is Miss Fenchurch? His lordship's housekeeper. Okay. Um, if Mr. Ambrose doesn't turn up and I find you some milk, would you be able to introduce me to Lord Panswick? Hmm. His lordship really doesn't like visitors, ma'am. I'll take the risk. Miss Fenchurch will be cross with me. But she'll be even crosser if I come back without fresh milk. So, do we have a deal? Aye. Bring me some milk and I'll take you to his lordship. Thank you. Okay. But hopefully Mr. Ambrose will arrive soon. Have you been waiting long for Mr. Ambrose? Aye. He should have been here a good two hour ago. He's here every market day, you see. He sells only the freshest milk. Miss Fenchurch swears by it. I hope Miss Fortune hasn't befallen him on his way here. I'm sure he will turn up. Oh, I hope so. So we haven't um, seen any cows, but there is a goat who might give milk. Did he say, I think he did say his goat gave him milk. So that's definitely a possibility. I was thinking we'd get some hair from the goat and fix the um, the bow. I know bows are normally made with horse hair, if I remember rightly. Um, but I guess goat hairs could work. Are you familiar with Hobbs Barrow? What's that? Never mind. What do you make of these stones? Oh, gives me the creeps. Why? Dunno. Just a feeling. I'll let you know if I find some fresh milk. Thank you, ma'am. But tell me if you see Mr. Ambrose, won't you? I will. Good day. Hey up. So I've got a few more things to to talk to him about. What do you make of these stones? Don't look like out to me. Yeah, they didn't really think much of the other one, did he? I met a girl at the Devil's Toe. She gave me this broken fiddle bow. Ha! Well, you've experienced the local folklore first-hand then, lass. Hmm. 
Do you have any fresh milk going, Spur? I'm a blacksmith, <laughs> not a cattle farmer. <laughs> yeah. Quite. Obviously. Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? Never heard of it. What is it? Hmm. Never mind. Thanks for your time. Bye. Speak to you later. Okay. So, let's go back to uh, the farm. How are we doing for time? Oh, yeah, we've got enough time just to try out my little experiment. Now, I've got nothing to put milk in, unfortunately. There was a bucket over here, I think. Uh, there's a bucket. Let's see if I can grab that. I should that. ask Mr. Bryden for permission before attempting to milk his goat. Okay. Ugh. I feel I feel these those clues are kind of making... Is that a little bit giving too much away? Because that was all I was going to do. But just clicking on the bucket... Uh, yeah, making the game too easy. I haven't actually had much trouble so far with, with puzzles, but early days, early days. Can we knock on the door? What do you want? Do you have any fresh milk going, Spare? <laughs> if you can get any milk out of old Eunice, you're welcome to it. Eunice? Me goat. Good luck. Okay, well, we have the permission. So I think what we need to do is grab the bucket then. And clearly we're going to have to bribe the goat with the apple. Hey girl, would you like an apple? The grumpy thing isn't interested. <laughs> Okay. Oh, well, oh, I thought that was such a good idea. <laughs> Clearly the game wants you to think that as well. Well, I have nothing else to give. Uh, we could just... Okay, well, what happens if we just try? All right. We're doing this. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, that goes evil. Well, that's the first truly creepy thing that's happened for quite some time. I, I... I'm not sure what that was. I don't know what's happening to me. All this superstitious nonsense must be getting to my head. <laughs> okay. Uh, do we do that again? I'm not going near that thing again. Okay. So yeah, so we definitely need to find something else then that will interest the the goat. Okay. Uh, we could. I should ask Mr. Bryden if he could milk the goat for me. Oh, why are you giving me these clues? I'm not asking for clues. All right. That's happened a couple of times previously. We're just giving well, away too much. Did you get any milk out of her? I tried, and failed miserably. Ah, uh, she's a temperamental beast. Perhaps you could milk her for me? I'd like to help you last, but I've just had a flare-up in me joints. I've worked myself too hard this morning. I couldn't bend down to save myself. Is there anything I can do to help? Ah, my wife would say I'm beyond any help. I'm certain of that. But if you know of any remedies for aching joints, please send them my way. I'll see what I can do, Mr. Bryden. I'm going to rest for a while. Ta-ra now. Okay, well we do know who knows uh, lots of uh, remedies for various things, and that's Mildred Walker. We go to over to her cottage. Oh, another flashback. Daddy, I have something for oh, you. I do hope you remember it. Bit older I've now. taken great care of it. I'll fetch it for you now, all right. Game saved. How do we do for time? I think that's probably a good point to leave it then. Uh, we're in the middle of a, another flashback. So when we come back, uh, we're going to go to Mildred Walker, who is like the uh, the elder woman, sort of, some people call her a witch, but she knows some uh, medicine and stuff. So we might be able to get a remedy for aching joints off her. That'll get us the milk, and that'll get us to meet Lord Panswick, which would be a big jump forward in the story there so uh yes we will do that in the next episode so thank you very much for watching again if you have made it this far please do 
leave me a comment down below to let, let me know what your thoughts are on this game so far if you've been following along um, I'd be very interested to know um, what you thought no, no spoilers obviously if you if you know the, uh, the story um, but yeah so my biggest complaint so far is that the, those clues are given out just a little bit too easy I wasn't asking for clues but they gave them to me anyway but anyway it's fine um, I'm enjoying it so far uh, yeah so I'll uh, see you in the next one goodbye